I think Karen sees her world okay. There are times when she's frustrated, but Karen doesn't see her world the way I feel like I do. Her stress is, I want my crayons, I want my coloring book, I want to watch TV when I want to watch TV, and I want to eat when I want to eat. Karen, in any situation, is the life of the party. She is funny, she likes to tell jokes, she likes to be silly, she likes the attention on her. The happiest memory I have of Karen was Karen loved to dance and sing. She was in a recital. She had the cutest little outfit on and she just would like belt out and sing. Karen always loved going to church and getting dressed up. She loved being a girly girl and she always had to wear these cute little heeled shoes. My name is Nancy Kessler and I just found out that my sister has Syngap 1. So this is all brand new to us. We are so lucky to be part of the SYNGAP1 community. The support has been overwhelming to us. When I found out Karen had SYNGAP1, I didn't know what it meant. I had no idea. I did a little bit of research. I put my information on Facebook and Karen's gonna be 65 years old and I'm from New Jersey. And then all of a sudden I got an instant message from Jess. She said, I think she's the oldest Syngap person probably in the United States, maybe even in the world. Syngap 1 disorder is a genetic disorder that's caused by variation on the Syngap 1 gene. It often results in a host of different neurological issues, primarily cognitive and learning disabilities, epilepsy, behavioral challenges, sleep disturbances, and hypotonia resulting in motor issues, gross motor issues and fine motor problems. When I met Karen, uh, she was wheelchair bound and um, did not interact a whole lot, uh, you know, and certainly she's had a long history of medical encounters and, and uh, various diagnoses. And she had this history of, of cognitive impairment and behavioral challenges and seizures. We uh, were able to uh, select testing uh, that was focused on those questions. And so the lab was able to take that clinical information and really focus on genes that would result in that presentation. Unfortunately, Karen had a challenging life since this was only diagnosed recently, and previously she carried many other diagnoses from the past, probably none of which were really justified in the modern use of the term. When Karen was born, she at first did not have good feeding skills. That was the first sign that there was something going on. We weren't really sure what it was. Karen's developmental milestones were all delayed. She didn't sit up, she didn't crawl, she didn't walk on time, she didn't speak on time. She was very, very fussy. She cried a lot and she was very difficult to manage. But there were definitely signs that something was going on. Karen has done really well. She's, uh, she's a fighter. She survived the treatment of COVID. She's uh, lost a little bit of energy as a consequence of COVID and has some consequences of you know, being a prolonged bad rest. But she's coming around and she has maintained her spark. She's fun, she's fun to be around. The availability of genetic testing is definitely increasing, but it's not increasing quickly enough. You have to meet certain criteria to get a genetic test. So for example, if your child has cognitive or developmental delays, but they don't yet have epilepsy, it's not guaranteed that they'll get the test that can diagnose SYNGAP1, not just SYNGAP1, but other developmental diseases as well. 
Well, this is pretty new stuff. So all my patients who are adults didn't have the benefit of genetic testing, but I think it's being done more and more for pediatrics. I think it's important for targeted therapies. Also, I think it's important for family planning. If we know that one sibling has a genetic disorder, then it's important for the rest of the family. Her sister, Nancy, told me that her dad had a lot of similarities to Karen, so we thought maybe this was going to be a genetic disorder. For years we wondered, is what Karen has something my sister or I could pass down? Or could my daughter or nieces pass it to their children? With genetic testing, we're often looking for new mutations called de novo, Latin for new mutations. And the only way to really ascertain if a mutation is new is ideally by getting the DNA from both the patient or proband as well as both biological parents. Normally when we're doing a large-scale genomic sequencing, we like to do what's called a TRIO test. In Karen's case, we didn't have her parents available. So what we did is we looked at other family members' siblings and we tested them because that could also give us some information, not as directly, but it could still give us guidance, especially if one of those family members had the same Syngap mutation, for example. We thought maybe it was going to be passed from her father to her. Um, turns out it wasn't. It's a de novo mutation, so, which means that she's the only one who has it in her family. So that's how we went about the genetic testing. Having the genetic diagnosis, like Syngap-1 for Karen, is extremely informative. It tells us the exact cause of the underlying intellectual disability, the epilepsy syndrome, and really what's going on neurologically in that person. Now that she has the diagnosis, she can get even more targeted care. When Karen was younger, very little, her behaviors were so difficult that my parents had to make very difficult choices and difficult decisions. They didn't know what to do. They didn't have the therapies they have now. My parents had to rely on those doctors for guidance and the guidance was to send Karen to residential schools. They didn't have group homes back then. From the age of six, Karen lived in residential schools. Karen has had seizures her entire life. When she was younger, she was diagnosed with grand mal seizures and petite mal seizures. She was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Since Karen's Syngap-1 diagnosis, we're trying to see how many of these diagnoses are accurate, including schizophrenia, organic brain dysfunction, which she had when she was younger, the seizures, and all the other things that have happened in her diagnosis history. For the neurologist who sees them once a year, or maybe goes to the group home and sees them twice a year, it's worth getting genetic testing. It tells us there's a group of medications that tend to work well, and there's actually a group of medications that tend to make things worse. So getting the gene diagnosis, even in a 50-year-old, can really change the nature of therapy. And more importantly, I think, is that with all the research going on, there will be gene therapies. There'll be gene replacement therapies. There'll be ways to edit genes to correct abnormal mutations with CRISPR enzymes. And probably that will improve their cognition, their behavior, and hopefully their epilepsy. The example of Karen really should encourage other medical professionals to test people who have developmental disabilities and epilepsy to get to the root cause of those problems is really beneficial to understanding what the disease looks like at different stages of a person's life. So knowing about Karen uh, really helps the parent community think about what does it look like for our child to have Syngap-1 in middle age, in old age, and how do we prepare for that? 
How do we help them live a healthy life? How do we help them live a great life well into their 50s, 60s? I realise just how fortunate we are to already have this diagnosis for my daughter Hannah. Families like ours with younger children now have the knowledge to be able to support them, fight for them and help give them the highest quality of life possible. I imagine that other parents of children with SINGAP1 feel the same way. If Karen was diagnosed when she was younger with SYNGAP1, so many things would have been different. First of all, my mom passed away 20 years ago not knowing. She would have known, and that would have been much better for her. Karen would have received the proper medical care. She would have received the proper therapies. They would have understood that she had autism, and she would have received the proper behavioral therapy for her behaviors. Karen had surgery for behaviors back then. She had a modified lobotomy because they didn't know what to do. That could have been avoided. So many things in her life would have been different. She would have been able to stay home. She wouldn't have had to go to residential care. So her whole life would have been different had the diagnosis been addressed back then. For the SINGAP family and caregiver community, learning that there is a patient, an older patient with a SINGAP1 variation, it's really amazing. <laughs> it's amazing to finally have found someone. And of course, as, as parents of children with this disorder, when you find out your child's diagnosed, you kind of live their entire life in one day and you think very frequently about what the rest of their life will be like whether they'll be happy, healthy, how they'll continue to progress. And it is very difficult to extrapolate one person's experience to the rest of the community, given that SINGAP1 is such a spectrum disorder. But what's amazing to see with Karen is that she's happy, she's healthy, and she's being well taken care of. And those are the things I think we all want in our children's future. It gives us a lot of hope and it galvanizes us to continue to try and steer science and technology in the direction of finding a therapy or a treatment that will help mitigate some of the challenges that people live with when they have SYNGAP1 disorder. Karen still loves today to get dressed up. She loves putting on a little makeup, getting her hair done, getting her nails done. She loves wearing dresses. Karen loves singing. She loves music. If you ask Karen to sing, she would sing for you. She remembers all the words to certain songs, which is just amazing. survived COVID. Shortly after that, we received the diagnosis, the DNA testing results that Karen had SYNGAP1. And we thought, oh my goodness, Karen survived for a reason. She survived because of this diagnosis. If my parents only had known. And now, Maybe information about Karen will help others. It just means something and we're celebrating her life. <laughs>